Hello, my most amazing artists. It's so good to see you again. Let's start off our art class by saying our class mantra on the count of three. One, two, three. My mantra, I am positive. I am creative. I am mindful. I am amazing. I am an artist. All right, guys, I think we are ready to start a new project. Are you ready? Our next project is called Alphabet Soup. And our goals for this week are to use a variety of colors to write the letters of the alphabet. Okay, and we'll go over what that means in just a moment. But first, raise your hand if you are an alphabet expert. You know all the letters of the alphabet and you know the exact order that they go in. All right, my hand is up. I know you can't see me, but my hand is up in the air because I consider myself an alphabet expert and I think you are too. So let's say the alphabet together on the count of three. One, two, three. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Woo, good job guys, a round of applause for us. Awesome work. So these are all the letters of the alphabet and we need to know these because we are gonna use the letters of the alphabet in our artwork today, all right? It's really cool because letters are all around us. Almost everywhere you go, you see some type of letter. Whether you are driving around in a car and you see street signs, those have letters on them. Or if you take a trip to the city, there's lots of posters on buildings or billboards that have letters on them, okay? Even McDonald's and other fast food chains, whenever you're driving around the street going to get dinner, you see letters, all right? When you're reading books or you go to the library, there's lots of letters in there. On the TV, there's letters. And even if you go to the grocery store, all the stuff that we buy at the grocery store usually has the letters on it. Whenever you're walking around home, do you see anything that has letters on it? What about your toothpaste bottle? Does that have letters on it? What about the milk jug in your refrigerator? Does that have letters on it? Guys, letters are all around us and artists use letters to inspire their artwork. Here are a few different artists. Jasper John created this one. And this one, if you look really closely, you can actually see the letters of the alphabet. A is here, then there's a B and a C, C, E. Do you see the letters of the alphabet in his artwork? Super cool, right? This is Roy Lichtenstein. This is him next to one of his paintings. He created like comic book paintings, except for they were really big. Look how big that painting is compared to how small he looks next to it, okay? And inside of this painting, he put phrases that these characters are saying. So he used letters in his work. And last but not least, this is art by Andy Warhol. He created this in 1968, about how long ago was that? 50 something years ago? But Andy Warhol created these prints. These are actually prints. He used printmaking techniques to create these Campbell soup cans. And if you look really closely on the letters on the Campbell soup cans, all of these are different uh, flavors of soup. Pretty cool, huh? So he used letters in his work. All of these people did. And we are going to use letters in our artwork today. All right. Please watch this storybook that has inspired our project. And guys, it's starting to get a little bit chilly outside. So this book is perfect to listen to um, and go along with our project. Okay, so please go watch the story before you get started on your artwork today. All right, for those of us who are ready, let's go over what you will need for this beginning part of our project. All right, so I have this here, not for paint. This is actually a paint palette, but I'm not gonna use it for paint today. I'm actually gonna use it as a stencil, okay? We need to draw a circle. And if you can, we need to try to make it a perfect circle. So that's why I found something circular in my classroom that I can just trace around. This could be anything. So you can use a lid to a jar or something like that, but it needs to be somewhat big. This paint palette is about seven inches across. So that's about how big you want your circle to be. Um, it could be bigger, but we probably don't wanna make it any smaller than this because we are going to be adding letters inside of this circle. 
and we want to be able to see which letters are which, okay? And if it's a really small circle, then all of our letters will be bunched together and we won't be able to see them. All right, I also have a blank piece of paper. I just cut this into a square because it fits nicely on my circle, but you can use any size, color, shape of paper that you want as long as you can fit your circle on it. I also have a variety of colors of oil pastel. Uh, remember, oil pastels are kind of like crayons, except for they're more vibrant in color, but crayons are a great substitution if you don't have oil pastels. And before we get started today, I wanna to quickly go over what you will need next time. Okay, so we will be painting over our letters next time. Um, and this is a watercolor pan. So you, if you have one of these, that would be awesome. You can use these. Um, this is the same thing as what I will be using, which is liquid watercolors, okay? These are the same thing as the pan of watercolors, except for you, this already has water added to it. Instead of where on the pan watercolors, you have to add water to your colors to get them started, okay? But this is just me letting you know that next week we will be using watercolor paint, okay? So you might need a paintbrush as well next week. But for this week, all you need are these things on the screen, all right? So the first step that we are going to do is we just got a new piece of paper. So we always need to write our name somewhere nice and big. And this part isn't really necessarily for my SDOC at home students, but for my face-to-face -face students, we really need to write our name really big and our class code. So once you have your name and your class code, we are going to flip our paper over. So now our name is on the back. We don't want to draw or paint on the same side as our name because then we're just going to cover it up. But if we write our name and then flip our paper over, now our name is on the back and we have a nice blank sheet to start with. Okay, so I am going to take my circle template, whatever you have. And if you can't find anything circular, then guys, you can just try your best to freehand this circle shape. Okay, so I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to hold down whatever I'm tracing so that it doesn't move around. With my other hand, I have my pencil and I'm holding it up against this um, palette to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere else. And I'm just tracing all the way around. Once I go all the way around, I can pick up my circle and we're done with this. So you can set it off to the side. All right, so after you draw your circle, we are ready to start drawing our letters inside of our circle. If you watch our storybook um, soup day, then you'll see that they made alphabet soup. So this is going to be our bowl of soup, all right? But first we have to create our noodles and we are gonna do that by drawing them with our oil pastels, okay? And you can use any colors that you want to as long as we use a good variety or mixture of colors. When I say the word variety, it means using a bunch of different colors, okay? And we are gonna stick to all uppercase letters because in alphabet soup, the noodles are usually all uppercase. Okay, so I'm just going to choose a green. And what I'm going to do is just start with a letter. And I guess I'll just start with a letter A. After you draw one letter, and I want to press down kind of hard with my oil pastel because like I said earlier, we are going to paint on top of this. And if I don't press hard enough, then my paint will just cover up my crayon or my oil pastel. And then after you draw one letter, we are going to do, 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 rotate our paper to another side. And I think I'll do an H over here. After you draw the next letter, we are going to do, 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 rotate our paper again, choose a different color. And I'll do an uppercase I over here. Rotate, choose another color. And I'll do an M. Okay, the reason why we're rotating our paper is because if you look at an actual bowl of alphabet soup, the letters are all kind of rearranged and mixed up together. So that's kind of our goal today is to make our alphabet look like it's all jumbled together like real alphabet soup would be. I'm gonna dump these out so I can see my colors better. Let's choose a blue. After you write a letter, we're gonna rotate. We want some letters to be sideways, upside down, like real alphabet soup. So that's why we are rotating our paper, okay? After we draw one letter. And we're gonna to wanna to fill up this space as much as we can with our letters. So after I draw a letter, I'm gonna rotate it. Rotate. Rotate. Over and over and over again until I fill up my whole entire circle. 
I'm also not drawing my letters too big. I'm trying to imagine that this circle is an actual bowl of soup, so my noodles would be kind of smaller than you might think. Okay, so don't draw your letters too big, but don't draw them too teeny tiny either, because then they might be hard to see. All right, so do them kind of like a noodle size. All right, I think I have every single letter of the alphabet here, but if you want to fill up more of your space in here, then you can start adding more letters. So even though I already have an A right here, maybe I want another A, okay? So you can repeat the alphabet again if you want to. Once you fill up most of your space with your rotating and jumbled up letters using a variety or a bunch of different colors of oil pastel or crayons, if you want, you can go in and do a couple little circles in there just to fill up the space a little bit more using different colors. Okay, just like that. And that'll just fill up our space a little bit. And sometimes soups have little herbs or green vegetables floating around, um, but you can do your circles in any colors that you want to, okay? Not too many circles. I just did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can do uh, more or less than that. You don't even have to do circles if you don't want to. You could just have letters, whichever you want, as long as you use a bunch of different colors and you use uppercase letters, making sure to rotate your paper after writing each one, okay? So then it makes our um, alphabet look like it's very jumbled, just like alphabet soup would be. All right, after you get done filling your circle up with letters and maybe little circles if you want to, little teeny tiny circles, then you are done for the week. I hope you guys have a lot of fun creating the beginning part of your alphabet soup. Remember, next week we will be using watercolor paint, okay? So if you want, you can go get some of that if you don't have any, or you can just wait till next week and I will share with you a couple of um, alternative materials that you can use. All right. I hope you guys have lots of fun and I will see you next time. Bye guys.